Hey everybody, it's Gameragi. We're back with yet another Let's Play. This time it's gonna be Puzzle Agent. Starring Nelson Tethers. He's the main character. <laughs> so this is gonna be a little bit different. This is a puzzle game, so obviously this is gonna be chock full of spoilers in case you wanted to actually solve these puzzles on your own. So I apologize in advance if you're, you know, <laughs> get this ru game ruined for you. But the story is freaking hilarious and awesome. So, uh, I pretty much have to play this because it's so great. And I actually have the second one too, so I might do that after. It's not a very long game, so. Yep, anyway, let's get started. Man, yeah, new game. Let's do it. Okay, whoa, that's a creepy dream. Don't want to see spacemen in dreams, I tell you what. Okay, Nelson Tether's crossword puzzle has been ripped to bits. But is there something written on it? Reconstruct it to find out. Okay. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> and this game is actually really well made, just, I don't know, the sound quality and animation is freaking delicious to the eyes, man. It's delicious. This puzzle's pretty easy because you could kind of just drag them pretty close to where they need to be and <laughs> they'll just pop into place. Wait, is that it? Scoggins. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Sweet! Okay, well a lot of stuff just happened there, but basically every puzzle uh, we can use up to three hints, also known as pieces of chewing gum, because they help him think or something. <laughs> uh, and then so many wrong answers, and since we got it right on the first time we got zero, so you get rewarded for that, and then we got ten stars, top agent, oh yeah. Puzzle Research, this is Agent Tethers. I, I think you have the wrong number. Oh, I see. A an assignment. In the field? No, no, sir, it's, it's just, it's been, yes, quite some time. Uh-huh. Erasers? The foundation of democracy? Oh, absolutely, sir, I agree, sir. Oh, yes, the White House needs its erasers, sir. I'll be on the next plane to... Wait, where? Thank you. 
just arrived in Scoggins, Minnesota. Population, 754. Temperature, hmm, it's cold and not much to look at. According to the agency, there's some kind of situ in thing going on at the local eraser factory. The whole plant is shut down. There's a weird man staring at me. Hopefully, this won't be a big waste of time. <clears throat> Agent Tether's out. Oh, I have no idea where my hotel is. I might have to ask for directions. <laughs> a weird man. I like how he's saying that right next to him. Okay, so basically how the, this game works is you can click around the screen and it'll show you stuff you can interact with. And there's really not too many things to interact with, usually, so it's pretty easy to figure out. So we're going to talk to this creepy man on the bench. Excuse me, I'm Nelson Tethers with the FBI's Department of Puzzle Research. Hello? Yep. Okay, and you are? Bjorn. Bjorn? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Mr. Bjorn. Boy, those snowmobiles sure are a bumpy ride, eh? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't talk too much. Can you give me directions to the nearest hotel? I'm having a little trouble finding my way around. You'd never get there. Roads are too slick. Sir, I'm an agent of the FBI's Puzzle Research Division. It can't be harder than the puzzles I see every day. Not so. It's really just a, a matter of trajection. Okay, on the way to the hotel, you're going to pass two traffic lights. <laughs> All right, Nelson's snowmobile is sliding along the roads. Arrange the logs to help Nelson bump his way to the hotel. Make sure to pass the traffic lights. Bjorn mentioned along the way. Okay. Puzzle rules. Drag logs from the menu to the game grid. Log can be dragged. Yada yada. Snowmobile will start off heading south. When it hits a log, it will bank right or left depending on the log's orientation. Nelson must hit every stoplight on the his way to the hotel. Press submit. And you go. So basically, we have to ricochet him through these two traffic lights and then to the question mark square over here using these locks. So let's see. Let's make him go... Let's make him go this way. Bank him up to this log. Let's get over here. I'll make him go down and then over there. Does that look like it works? Down here. Yeah, that should work. Okay, let's do it. Go, Nelson, go! Yeah! Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Tax dollars spent. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> Sweet. Boosh. 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 I love it. Love it. Oh yeah, and I forgot to explain this little how thing. It shows you how to solve the puzzle. Like if you got it right in a couple tries or something, I guess it explains how you would have done it. I don't know. Must have gotten lost. I thought your directions were taking me to the hotel. They did. Uh, I'm standing in front of the hotel, aren't I? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Wow, Bjorn, really? <laughs> the hotel was right here. Oh, jeez. I'm here to investigate an incident at the Scoggins Eraser Factory. Do you know anything about it? Nope. The hotel's going to close soon. Better check in if you're sticking around. Hmm. 
Seen any suspicious people hanging around the hotel lately? Yep. Really? Can you describe them? Skinny. Asks lots of questions. Wears a stupid hat. Thanks for the tip. Yep. <laughs> well, Bjorn is not cooperative at all. Alright. Goodbye, sir. <laughs> he just walks away. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, nothing else. Let's go into... Wow, no wonder that he didn't know it was a hotel. It's called Vakla's. Oh, I'm supposed to inspect this. Ha! Huh. Discovered a fence. Boards all chewed up something terrible. Could be the work of strays trying to get to the dumpsters back there. I don't know why I'm reporting this. I don't either. But that is pretty creepy. Hotel! Okay, so now we're in the hotel. It's a psycho man over there, freaking out, and this very mysterious woman. Okay, so uh, another thing about this game, they're gonna hide little pieces of gum like this, around. So those are basically used for hints, like I said before. So we're just gonna pick those up when we see them. Oops. Uh, I want to check back here. Yeah, that's all. Uh, Someone left a screwdriver in the alley beside the hotel. Looks clean. Probably of no consequence. Okay. <laughs> well, there's a puzzle right here. Hmm. Winner undeclared in local contest. The Annabelle Grill Ladies Arm Wrestling Tournament is over, and the judge missed it. Read the four statements and help him determine the winner. Ooh, this is gonna be tough. I know it is. Okay. So this lady, I pin pearl like a new hat. Flo's grisly grip couldn't whip me. Oh my god. <laughs> hat won fair and square. Outmatched by the grisly grip. Huh. So we have to determine... Determine the winner. Okay. Well, she obviously lost. She lost. Pin pearl like a new hat. So it's, e it's either one of these. And the grizzly grip couldn't with me. Oh man, this is tough, man. I <laughs> Who the heck would it be? So, we only hear three of their names. Pat, Flo, and Pearl. And Flo's the one with the grizzly grip. I assume this is... Flo. So this would be... Pat? No. Dude, I have no idea. We're gonna go with we're gonna go with this lady right here. <laughs> Hopefully. Crossing my fingers, 50% chance. Oh. <laughs> okay. So it must be this girl. Honestly, I don't know how you figure that out. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> so many tax dollars. Oh my god. Aww. And we still got excellent. So I'm gonna look at this really quick. Four person tournament means there were three matches. Tournament. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Like, they had two people, and then two people, and then the winners of those two. Oh, I didn't even think about that. 
Two competitors were eliminated in the final match. Two winners face off. And the winner of that was... Oh, yeah, see, that would have made more sense. Because there were two people that said they went against the Grizzly, grizzly Grip. Okay. Alright, so okay. <laughs> Ooh, man, that is confusing. You have to kind of know, like, tournament rules then for that. Okay. That was a tricky one. No kidding. Okay, I think that's all we can do out here. Oh, some gel. Alright. Let's talk to Miss Lady over here. How you doing, Miss Lady? Well, hello there, mister. Welcome to Valda's Inn. I'm Martha Garrett, but everyone calls me Ma. How can I help you? I'm Nelson Tethers. I have a reservation. Oh, yeah. You're here about the Eraser Factory, eh? We're awfully excited to have a real FBI man in our town. It's just like TV, yeah? Ooh, I'm gonna make some hot dish for you later. A uh, hot dish? Oh, you'll love it. I've never met a man who didn't love himself some hot dish. What the heck is a hot dish? <laughs> oh my god. So, uh, what room am I in? Yeah, okay, I've got your room right here. Oh dear, this is so embarrassing. The night clerk wrote down your room number in code. Hmm. Mind if I have a look? I bet I can figure out what room I'm in. <laughs> in code? Okay. Security-minded night clerk notated Nelson's room number in cryptic form. Help Martha see what's written so you can get your keys. Okay. Alright. Uh... So this is the code, I assume. Hmm. Oh, you know what? If you look in the spaces, it writes nine. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Bam. Let's do it. That's crazy. I remember getting stuck on that for a really, really long time. There you go, Mrs. Garrett. Oh, yeah, now I see. Okay, then. Here's your room key, FBI man. Thanks. Actually, while I have you here, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Real quick, I promise. Oh, yeah, of course. What do you know about Scoggins Erasers? Do you know anything about the problem at the factory? Yeah, so tragic about the accident, huh? Accident? Oh, yeah, the foreman, Isaac Davner, they say he was killed in there. Is that so? Well, not to be gossipy, but I heard the accident was caused by raccoons. Raccoons? Yeah, little creatures that live in the woods around the factory. Maybe you should go talk to Sheriff Bog about it, though. You should be able to catch him out by the factory right now. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. How do I get to the factory from here? The FBI doesn't know where the factory is? Oh dear, our moose is cooked. Rest assured, ma'am, the FBI just likes to confirm intelligence with civilian knowledge of... We like to double check things. Oh, of course. Well, it's easy. I have a tourist map of our little town of Scoggins right here. You know, our Scoggins Erasers is the plant that supplies the White House with all of its erasers. The president could be fixing a mistake with a Scoggins Eraser right now. Yes, ma'am. That's why I'm here. That and the fact that every time the Bureau made an inquiry into the situation, all we ever got back were bizarre puzzles. Oh yeah, well, that'll happen. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> I love this Minnesota accent thing. Uh, puzzle patron. The guy in the lobby, is he okay? Oh, that's Bo Murphy. He's always been a bit of an odd one. Yeah, he sits there all day trying to do his puzzles. He mostly keeps to himself, and I bring him some food from time to time. Sometimes I swear he'd starve to death if I didn't bring him something to eat. Ugh, 
What a weirdo. <laughs> Thanks. Well, goodbye. Enjoy your stay. Oh, that reminds me. Do you have any gum for sale? Or know where I can buy some? Dear, we've been out of gum for quite some time. What? Haven't seen a stick in months anywhere in town. We tend to get shipments of things like that in the spring. So, no gum? Nope. Gum helps me concentrate. <laughs> Pick up the ABC gum. <laughs> Already been chewed. Boosh. <laughs> Elson Tethers thinks best when he's chewing gum. Any kind of gum. Find discarded gum and use it to get a hint during a sticky puzzle. That is so disgusting, Nelson. That is so gross. Okay, let's talk to this weirdo. Excuse me, you look perplexed. Puzzles. So many puzzles. Puzzles? I might be able to help you with that. Bo has swallowed a rubber band again. <laughs> again. His x-ray shows only tapeworms. Or does it? Rotate segments of the pesky parasites to reveal the hidden object. Tapeworms? Oh my god. This guy has some issues. Okay, so we have to rotate all this and put it all together. Oh boy, here we go. Mm. I know we somehow have to get a rubber band out of this because it's like a loop. So we have to make sure we have a loop in here somewhere. Looking quite right. <laughs> huh. Okay. <laughs> this music. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah! Okay, that's a rubber band. Okay. So this side's good. This side could use some help. Okay, that's good. And a two headed freaking table arm? Do they have two heads? Oh man, I don't know. That looks kind of weird, but it works, so. All right, we'll do it. Come on. Come on! Woohoo! Wow, two-headed tapeworm. That's really confusing. Jeez. Yeah! Solved. Now maybe you can relax a little. With the uh, whispers, if it's an acrostical enigma, maybe it's a Baltimore trans deletion. The whispers? Or not? Um, okay. <laughs> oh, there's a puzzle right over here. I might as well solve this one. Well, here. these are interesting. Yeah, those are Scoggins gnomes. All the tourists love them. But I think one has gone missing. I swear, I had six of them. I took a picture when I set it up, but I guess I lost it. I still have the film negative, though. Ceramic gnome has disappeared from the hotel display. But which gnome? Identify the gnome and mark this photo negative that doesn't appear in the display. Okay, so. It's negative. I guess the colors are reversed. Yeah, because white is black. So the colors are reversed. It also looks like it's backwards because the words are backwards. Okay, so we had. Three green and three red. But we're missing a red one. Which means we're missing a, one of these green ones. Okay. And this one's facing his arm, and this one's facing away from his arm. So that would mean. Oh, 
So we have two facing their arm in this one. So it's got to be one of these two. But since it's reversed, it has to be the one that is the same as this. Okay. So hopefully that's it. <laughs> Negative gnomes. Sweet. Well, one of your gnomes has most definitely run off. Oh my, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> okay, so I guess we're supposed to meet Sheriff Bog at the factory, so let's do that. The residents of Skagen seem nice enough. Aside from one wild goose chase, everyone's been cooperative. Plus, it looks like I'm primed for all the hot dish I can eat. It remains to be seen if that's a good thing. I got a map from the hotel owner, so I'm heading over to the eraser factory. Agent Tether is out. Am I supposed to be saying that? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Let's do this. Ah, uh, the factory. Hello. Ooh, come. Is there any more around here? Oh. See, it highlights the gum, which is nice. Okay. Hi, Sheriff Bob. Yeah, I'm uh, Nelson Tethers of the FBI's Department of Puzzle. Agent Tethers, good to meet you. We got a real mess here. Yes, we do. We do? Oh, yes. It's going to be a while before we can get this factory running again. But my job is to get this factory back to making erasers. Agent Tethers, you're in a right pickle. Well, I should probably ask you some questions about the incident then. That's what I'd do if I was a big, important FBI boy. <laughs> oh, Sheriff Bog. A little bit condescending there, What buddy. was this incident? Well, we don't need to be dramatic. What happened? There was an explosion. What? Oh, yeah. A big explosion. And the foreman just never came home. Hmm. When did the accident take place? Well, I've been trying to figure that out myself. Here's what I know. The Rusty Z Guard Service was employed to keep watch over the factory from midnight to midnight yesterday. From their statements, can you determine the time of the big noise? Um. Boom, one hour before the last shift started. I get the shortest shift, three hours. Aw, poor Pop. <laughs> Only Bernie put in the full eight hours. Worked from six till I was relieved. Wait. Okay. So they start working at midnight. So he's not the first shift. Bernie put in full eight hours, so he couldn't have been the first shift. three hours, he didn't get the first shift. So Al probably got the first shift. And then he worked from six until he was relieved. Since he works three hours, that means uh, nine to midnight, I guess. So that means he works uh, until nine. One hour before the last shift, which would be eight. Yeah? Does that make sense? I think that. <laughs> I think it does. Okay. Hopefully. Here we go. Sweet! Boosh! Boosh! Oh! 
don't if care. If there was an explosion at that time, wouldn't the icicles on the building have been knocked off? Hmm. Good point. Maybe they grew back. <laughs> Maybe they did. What happened to the foreman? My notes don't have a lot of details. Well, we're still trying to figure that out. One day after work, Mr. Dabner just never came home. The accident was pretty bad. Oh, is there, uh... Is there a body? No, nope. he's just gone. Isaac Dabner's his name, if you don't have that in your notes. We don't even know if he died in that explosion? Won't be able to find that out till we find a way into the factory. Hmm. Well, it seems like the lock is from the outside. You'd think they'd be able to get in. Huh. What did your investigation turn up? Not much. I can't figure out how to get past this lock. Well, that's because it's missing a piece. I can see that just by looking at it. So it is. I guess that's why you make the big bucks, right? That's right, sir. <laughs> can see it just by looking at it. <laughs> well, I don't seem to be getting a lot of answers. Listen, why don't you meet me down at the Moose Ear Diner later? I have some files related to the case that you might be able to help me with. Oh, okay, but I really think... Agent Tethers, it's a pleasure working with you. You're doing a great job. I'll meet you at the Moose Ear in a bit. Hmm, indeed. That's awfully suspicious. Okay, well, I'm gonna end this part here again. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the time. It's been 33 minutes already. Anyway, yeah. Next time we'll meet uh, Sheriff Bog at the Moose Eater Diner, and maybe he'll give us a little more information on this puzzler. So, yeah. See you guys next time.